Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. And hello, hello, hello. Today is December 9th, 2015, and this is Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. I am Mark Lanehart, and I will be your host for the next 60 minutes as we engage inspiring topics, fun and intuitive guests, and what I like to call a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Speaking of spiritual fun, if you're looking for a reading, healing, hiking, or a workshop in metaphysics, make sure to visit my site, marklanehart.com, or internet search The Intuitive Prospector for my upcoming 2016 events here in Seattle, Washington. And back again with me today and every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, is my best American psychics colleague, friend, and awesome co-host, Kim Falcon, founder of Love First in Encino, California. Hello, my dear. Well, good afternoon, Mark. How's it going up there? It's great. Just had a big, big storm that came through. Lots of rain, thunder, and lightning, but you know, with the storm comes the cleansing. So now the sun is out, and it's beautiful. How about you? <laughs> well, you know, here in Southern California, it's always sunny. <laughs> it's very consistent, our weather. There's nothing wrong with that, but I do like a little change every now and then. We had 80-degree temperatures yesterday, so we can't complain. <laughs> it's <laughs> lovely out here, and um, so excited to be here this week, as I am every week. Welcome, inspired listeners. As Mark said, I'm the founder of Love First, and if there's anything that I can do to help support you on your path in the way of healings, hypnotherapy, or readings, her actually upcoming classes too. I do have a, an upcoming uh, mediumship development class that I'm going to be hosting again in the month of January on Saturday, the 23rd. Please go to my website to learn more at lovefirst.info. And along that, Kim, do you want to go ahead and get into how the, the guests from around the world can interact with the live show, our social media, our positive affirmation, and our encore shows? Absolutely. So you can find us at any time on social media, on Facebook under Inspired Living Radio, also on Twitter and Instagram under Inspired, the number four and us, and also on Google Plus uh, under Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. And this is where you can learn uh, every week what we're going to be uh, talking about in Inspired Living, about our guests that we're going to be having on, and uh, where you can interact with us with questions, uh, comments, or even suggestions of what you might like to have us cover on our upcoming shows. Um, and you can also find us under, uh, you can list, listen to us on a podcast after every live show. It's made available on demand um, on Podbeam, SoundCloud, and also under the archives. Did I miss one, Mark? Uh, we are growing the channel both in Vimeo now and YouTube as well, and so there there's a go. there's a lot of outlets that you can get the show. But I would say Ohm Times Archives has all of our shows for the entire year, and you know the range of topics that we've covered has just been fascinating. Yeah, and it's kind of just a one stop. You can go there and listen to the live show as well as all of catch all of our archives as well. So yeah, it's it's kind of fun. I I go back and listen to some of our past shows too, just to. Uh, learn again from you know the guests that we've had on there's, there's been quite a few um, inspiring topics that we've covered and speaking of which um, I'd like to remind our listeners what our inspired affirmation is for the month of December and that is I receive every gift that the universe has for me I am bountiful blissful and beautiful so just a little uh, bit of inspiration for the month, and um, 
We hope that it, it helps you in the same way that it helps us. Yeah, I can't believe that the year is almost over and 2016 is right around the corner. We've been doing this almost a year now, so it's just amazing that we only have two more shows left. After this show today, we only have two more shows. Uh, no, three more shows. I'm sorry. We have three more shows because um, we're going to – the last show we're going to do – the last show of the year is going to be with you and I just talking about what 2016 has in store, maybe some predictions, maybe doing some readings live on the air, correct? Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? Everybody yeah. wants to know what's coming up for them in the next year. Yeah, <laughs> That's it's been fun. <laughs> it's always interesting to see what 2016 is bringing, and uh, we'll get into a little numerology and, and talk about – uh, some predictions that are uh, coming up for 2016. So beautiful, positive affirmation. I love that. We are all bountiful, blissful, and beautiful as long as we're open to receive what the universe has to give you. And at the opening of the show, I said that today was December 9th. And I want to give a shout out, and this is a special shout out because there's – Really few dates that really stand out in history more than December 7th. So two days ago on Monday was December 7th, and on that date uh, – Kim, are you familiar with your history? Do you know what December 7th is? D-Day. No, close. No. <laughs> I came later. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to kill you, you for asking something. me what my history is. You posted something on um, online about that, right? It's some kind of recognition. Yeah, Boy, Mar, you just put me on the spot, didn't I you? I did, but you'll never forget it now. So, what is it? Um, Pearl Harbor Day. And oh, Pearl so Harbor. Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Of all people, I should know that, right? <laughs> when is D-Day, though? Isn't that? Um... Uh, that's June. I think that's June 5th. Sorry about that. That's right. Okay. Hello. With my uh, history being from Hawaii, I should know I say, that. You're from Hawaii, so I thought <laughs> and, you, you know, might know that. <laughs> and actually, my my mom was there when it happened. She saw the planes flying over. No she was kidding. Up. Oh, for sure. Yes. I'm they, gonna sit they, down and talk with her because yeah. I am just fascinating by World War II and to actually see talk to somebody that's actually a part of that. That's that's amazing. But I just wanted to give a shout out because on that fateful Sunday. You know, over 2,400 American service members and civilians lost their lives. Our air and naval forces in the Pacific suffered a devastating blow, and it was really a date that forced the United States into one of the bloodiest wars the world has ever seen in World War II. And you know, President Roosevelt pre um, prededicated that that day as a date which will live in infamy, and it really has. So I just want to give a shout out to all of the um, veterans of the Second World War. You know, we, we offer our respect and our gratitude because without them, we would not be here today doing what we do with the freedoms that we have. And, uh, you know, just the blessings that uh, for those service members and all of the people that are still serving today, protecting our freedoms and our way of life here in the United States and around the world. So I just wanted to give a shout out for all the Pearl Harbor veterans and those um, part of that date, December 7th. And with that, Kim, we have a very special guest today. We're going to change focus, and we're going to actually start talking about how the trees got their voices. Uh, we have a special guest, Sue Lyon. Um, since the early age, uh, Sue has been profoundly connected to nature. And when Kim and I were looking over and uh, doing some research on Sue and her book, I, too, um, am fascinated with nature, and I thought this would be a great topic to talk about um, especially with the next generation that's coming up and how we can get them connected back to nature because nature is our greatest teacher. Um, so Sue, even as a small child, she observed butterflies and listened to the sounds of birds and the trees. And growing up, her love and connection with nature has never faltered. Um, she's written this book, and it's, it's received numerous national it's, – it's a recipient of 11 national book awards, and the name of the book is How the Trees Got Their Voices, and you can get it on uh, Amazon, and you can also get it over at Quanta um, Distribution Wholesale. Um, so today we'd like to welcome in Sue to talk about her book, talk in detail about um, you know what the book's about, how we can get the younger generations, the millenniums as we like to refer to – more connected with nature. So with that, Sue Lyon, welcome to Inspired Living welcome Mark and Kim. Welcome, Sue. Thank you so much. I am delighted to be here. So let's talk – just kind of introduce yourself to the, uh, the the audience that's listening live to you right now and, and tell us about um, not only the book that you've written, but you said that the full-time work that you're currently doing and you're pretty sought after uh, with the work that you're doing both in illustrations and um, – your full-time work. 
Well, I, I, like you said in the inter, in the introduction, I've always been connected to nature, which is really wonderful. But during high school, I decided that I was going to be a physical education teacher when I got to college. So I did all the sports. I did all the sciences and math. I loved biology, which was very interesting. You know, I just loved learning about the animals and zoology. When I got to college, my brother uh, met me on the sidewalk, and he said, now that you're here, why don't you take some classes you never dreamed of taking before? And I kind of laughed. I said, what? And he said, take an art class. And I, I laughed again, and he said, you love it. And I did. I, I did all kinds of art projects, but I never had a real formal, any kind of formal art training. So I took my first drawing class as a PE major, and that just changed my life. I had an excellent drawing teacher, and I spent time trying to figure out how I could double major, be a teacher of PE, and be an artist. And I finally decided I would uh, change my major to graphic design because I knew a woman could make a living in graphic design. So being very practical. <laughs> but my career took off. I was able to land a job with a really high power agency in Denver when I got out of school and um I did a lot of I was trained the right way on the job and did a lot of design and then I started illustration and I have as a graphic designer I've had experiences with uh agencies and design studios I've had a corporate uh job uh in the visual communications department and I'm back running my own business again. Um, just Sue Lion Inc. I N K. And, and in Sue, this if you can, if you can hold that thought just for one moment, we're going to be yeah. heading into break uh, here on Ohm Times Radio, the Voice of Consciousness. We'll be back in two minutes to continue our interview with Sue Andra. And stay with us. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Live with Medium Lisa Phoenix. Mediumship messages and musings. Explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences. To explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. If you've ever said, I do, I do want it all. I do want happiness. I do want love. And I do desire the happily ever after fairy tale life. Then this show is for you. 
Join me, Dean Nicole Brandon, for my internationally acclaimed show, Bridal Talk Radio, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, where I'll bring you the top experts in the fields of communication, money, relationships, finance, pleasure, play, travel, sexuality, parenting, real estate, adventure, comfort, care, passion, and love. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Thank you, as always, for being with us this Wednesday and every Wednesday. Today, we are talking to Sue Lyon, and uh, we are taking questions on social media. If you've got them for us, please send them through. We'll bring them live to air. So, Sue, before we went to break, you were talking to us about how you came into uh, some of the illustration work that you're doing. And I just want to comment on that. That's quite a significant change or change in how you see the world for going from mathematics and science to now illustration and graphic design, right? It really is. It was quite remarkable for me as well to make such a gigantic jump. And I think I'd always been interested in creativity. You know, I made the best Valentine's boxes in elementary school, for example. But to (laughs) even think about um, being an artist as a career, just it just wouldn't have come up in our family conversation. It was my, I had very practical parents, and they were determined that I'd be able to make a living. And being a teacher was a very it was a a very sure way of being able to make a living. Being an artist was very iffy, so it, it just didn't even occur to me to take an art class in high school. So. But I did, and as a graphic designer, a woman's very capable of making a living in graphic design, and it leads to all kinds of things. So the math and science, for example, I'm very comfortable on the computer and all the science, all the software that I need to use in my business. I'm very comfortable using that software. So I think the math and science part of me comes out that way. And that's a great combination of skill sets to have because uh, you typically hear of um, someone's strengths being either on the creative side or more the logical analytical side. So the fact that you have both of those together is a real blessing, I would say. I think uh, I think most graphic designers are they have to equally work from their left brain and their right brain because there is so much problem solving that goes on with the left brain and then the creativity that comes through on the right brain. So I think that's more common of graphic designers, not fine artists, but graphic designers. So when I started doing illustration as part of my graphic design work, I created, I have three or four different styles that I use. The one style that I use in the How the Trees Got Their Voices book, but I have other styles that are uh, geared toward corporation, the spot illustration for um, diagrams, those kinds of things. So it's just, it's, it, you know, the, <laughs> it's a wonderful combination. <laughs> I would say so, yes. I I wish I had uh, both of those like you do. (laughs) But I would say mathematics was my strong suit. But nonetheless, that's okay. (laughs) I've got I've got my own strengths. And uh, but it's I always admire people that um, that do excel in that area. You know, I'd love to hear more a little about, um, I would say, your connection to nature. And we're going to be talking about your book, How the Trees Got Their Voices, what inspired that, what the book is about and how we can learn from nature. But talk to us a little bit about your connection to nature. I, I believe that all of us uh, have the ability to be able to connect with nature in a very personal way. And I believe that all of us are, are uh, sentient beings. We are all created with molecules and atoms. We are all pure energy and that rocks are created with molecules that are moving around trees the same way just depends on how fast they move around to determine whether it's real hard like a rock or soft like a human being's skin but i believe that we are all um very much um spiritually and physically connected and i've had some 
experiences as an adult. I'm sure they happened when I was a kid because uh, Mark had mentioned butterflies. I had an experience with butterflies as a kid that I just took as commonplace. And as an adult, when I related that um, that story, it was it uh, people were amazed, you know, that butterflies were all flying around me and fluttering around my head and fluttering around my shoulders, and there's just a, this wonderful energetic quality to it. I've had trees flash light at me at nighttime, and the the trees book is a perfect example of being connected to nature because it was an uh, 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 an event that actually happened to me as a Girl Scout leader of two troops, and I had one of my troops tent camping. I always took my girls tent camping because I wanted them to enjoy nature and be out, you know, be able to listen to the wind at night and um, be able to cook over an open fire, those kinds of things. And it had been a rough night with the wind blowing and it was cold. And after we had eaten our lunches, I said to the girls, go in the tent and warm up and sing songs and and I took my wildflower book out to the fire circle and was just studying the wildflowers. And I kept hearing these voices. And I couldn't make out the words. I just kept hearing sounds that could have been uh, male voices, very melodious. And I kept looking for them. Were there, were there hunters in the trees or something like that? And I just couldn't see them because we were in the fall. We were camping out in the fall. And my eyes swung over to this stand of trees that I knew the voices were coming from that stand of trees. And when I walked over there and walked into this little, oh, kind of little protected area with rocks and all kinds of trees, this story just poured into me. It was like I, I could almost see the light of the story pouring down through my head. And uh, my first thought was, oh, my goodness, I need to go get my tablet and write this down. And I knew it, I, it would be lost if I had done that. So I stood there and allowed the story just to come into me. And and then the story ended just at the time where I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, these girls have got to get ready, get the fires ready for cooking. Um, so I didn't have a chance to write it down until after the campfire. And the campfire story that night was, telling the girls how the trees got their voices. And then I went back to my tent and I wrote it down. <laughs> so I, I believe that this kind of phenomenon is not just happening to me. I think it happens to lots of people. It's just us being willing to listen to it that way. Wow, that's really something. I saw a special once on TV actually where um, – you know, they're talking about uh, heightened senses, and um, it was a, a, a girl, a young girl who was very sensitive to nature and hearing um, trees speak to her as well, just as you've described. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's it was really fascinating. I, I don't I don't hear too much about that. I don't hear too too many people talking about being able to connect with nature in that way. Um, but what a gift it must be. What what is the premise for the book, how the trees got their voices? What what are some of the things that um, people can learn from that book or children? I I decided to write the book. It's almost like you could read it two ways. One is the the wonderful myth you know, the wonderful story of how the trees got their voices and to be that all of us are have been given gifts and mm-hmm. that the trees particularly have been given these absolutely wonderful gifts, you know, roots for animals to, to uh, sleep the night through and uh, strong trunks for people to lean against when they're tired and for animals to sleep during the night and... Um, blossoms for insects. The trees have wonderful gifts. And I and so the the story revolves around that, but along with it, me being such a um, nature person, I decided that I'd put a put a bunch of facts in there as well. So I have these little sticky notes 
along the edges of the book that have the facts. So there's a fact about the columbines or a fact about the bear or there's a nut catch that, you know, goes down the tree trunk head first. And I have some questions for the children in there. Um, for example, I have uh, one spread that has an owl sitting on the edge of the moon. And I have a question, can it possi- can an owl possibly fly to the edge of the moon? But then the next fact is the number of miles the Earth is away from the moon. So it starts a little bit of a dialogue in there. That was my hope, that it would start dialogue in there. And there are facts about the universe, about the birds, about the insects, about uh, just nature in general. I think I- that... I love it. I, I I love that because children, um, they learn in so many different ways with the fact that you can insert pieces of, you know, informational um, things for them to, to learn from, too, is, is really great. And I think the people who read to children learn from it as well. So I think yes, I, yes is I don't know how many miles it is to the moon. Well, <laughs> so, right, everybody learns. 286,000 miles. <laughs> I think that people who read to children, I believe that when children and the people who read to children know more about nature than when they actually have some sense about what nature is like, then they become more respectful of nature. And then along that, maybe they become more respectful of each other because we are all in this together. So my, my whole intention of this book and the, and the books that will be coming um, are all about getting people connected to the bigger environment, not just their own small world. Well, and I love this too, Sue, because, you know, in the spiritual community, channeling is, you know, oftentimes talked about, but mostly in the way of channeling higher beings or higher realms and not channeling nature, which it sounds like exactly what happened here uh, in the writing of this book. And as we uh, head into break here, stay with us for two minutes. We'll be back on Times Radio, the Voice of Consciousness. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know. I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. As difficult as it is to believe... There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. One Planet 7.3 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector, is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, Please visit MarkLaneHart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. What if living didn't have to be so serious? What if you could move beyond your problems with greater confidence and ease than you've ever imagined? Throw your labels out the window 
and join the irreverent therapists for practical tips and a very different way of approaching the changes you would like to create. Marilyn Bradford and Pam Hodling have empowered hundreds of people to come out of self-judgment, quit looking to experts, and begin to create the lives they desire. Join us Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Irreverent Therapist Show. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, everyone, to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. We have our special guest today, Sue Lyon, talking about her very first book that she uh, had written called How the Trees Got Their Voices. And, Sue, you were talking about butterflies, and I just wanted to let our listeners know, too, anytime we have an interaction with nature and, you know, um, all the different animals, you know, all the different species that are out there, and they present themselves to us, there is always a story or um, something to be learned from that. And so I just want to let the listeners know, anytime the butterfly shows up, a lot of times that's just telling you to lighten up and stop taking everything so seriously. So, you know, get ready for big changes, going from the caterpillar through the cocoon phase to the butterfly. And so I just wanted to uh, point that out uh, when the butterfly showed up. So it sounded like you said you were five, Sue, when that happened. You had butterflies all around you, so they were telling you big changes were coming. Well, I, I don't remember if I was five, but I was young. Yeah, I don't I mean, maybe exactly that's just a... year, what year was. Just was, but it was, to me, it was just, it was natural. Mm-hmm. It was natural. I didn't think of it as being something extraordinary but there were a lot of times that I was connected with nature you know in a way that my sister saw it later on she wrote me a poem when I was in high school and she put down in there you know I I my sister Katie learned from you as you gazed at the butterflies and you listened to the birds it was like wow my sister recognized it but I didn't see it as anything out of the ordinary you know what though I was thinking about that. I do think that we in America particularly are trained not to hear, not to pay attention to those things, that they, that we, we kind of justify the magic out of things. So I think children who grow up in a household where they're allowed to be more free, you know, more connected, remember more of the incidences that they've had with nature. But I do think as children get older and they're either made fun of or they're told it's not real or it's just your imagination working over time, that's when they learn not to see those things. So, yeah, I, you know, totally up to us as parents <laughs> not to not to lose the magic ourselves, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree with that. And maybe that five, maybe I was just saying five years of age because I was getting an intuitive hit and just said that out loud for, you know, five years of age and you're surrounded by butterflies. You're welcome. So I'll remember that. (laughs) (laughs) um, You know, I have a copy of the book. Thank you so much for um, uh, your publishing company to send that out to us to go through. And it is, it's a beautiful book. It's very well uh, illustrated. What I like about the book is you've painted. Um, or have drawn, not painted, but you've drawn in like all the faces. So you give representation to all the different trees and all the interactions, some some hidden stuff in some of the pages. And it's just a very well uh, put together book, um, very well illustrated. And it's also received numerous awards. I went ahead and just posted the Amazon link. Uh, right on our oh, website, that's great. Uh, that's great. Inspired Living Radio on Facebook. So listeners, if you want to go out and get her book, uh, it's on Amazon. It's got five-star rating uh, with the people that have actually bought the book and have read it and have rated it. So you've got a five-star rating on the Amazon. So in your opinion, Sue, why do you think that this is such a, a top seller? I think, I think the whole um, uh, kind of the easy connection – between a myth and the actual facts of being in nature makes it what it is. I also, I also have to say that my <clears throat> publisher, Karen Stuth of Satyama, has done a really wonderful job of marketing this book and marketing in the, in the right places where there are going to be people and um, people buying for children that will be intrigued with this book. It has a very spiritual connection with nature. Not that it's overtly spiritual, but it does. It definitely has a deeper connection with nature in it, and I think that's one of the pluses of the book. 
And I tell you, I had a wonderful time illustrating that book. I put a lot of effort in to try to make the um, creatures in there with, the, you know, the the right elements, the right spots mm-hmm. on their wings, or the right length bill or something like that without making it a biology um, illustration. So there's lots of color and lots of things for the kids to look at, lots of birds to find in the trees, for example. Mm-hmm. And what I like, too, is you've given all the different creatures, like, emotions. You know, like, the the bear is looking sad, and you talk about that. <laughs> but what I like, too, is you don't just fill up the page with a picture. You've got a lot of sayings that go all around the page. You actually have to turn the book upside down to actually read some of the captions that are on the outside of the picture. And I think that's very creative, intuitive, and fun, especially for children, because here they have this book, and they're literally turning it in circles trying to read all the different, you know, hidden things that are in there, the messages. So it's a lot of fun. Thank you. And the more the more they're involved in it, then the more they'll remember what they're reading. Yes, very much so. And you know, like I said, it's been recognized with a lot of national awards and honors for you know how the trees got their voices. Which award are particularly meaningful to you? Well, let's see. I have to. I have to say, the Next Generation Indie Awards for Best Design really. <laughs> So it was really very, it was very much of an honor to receive that award. Um, there is the Moonbeam Award. The Moonbeam, let's see, it's a Moonbeam Children's Literacy Award. And that award really promotes literacy. I, I think with our modern age of having so many electronic gadgets and that kind of stuff, that it's really important for children to do a lot of reading, just physical reading, and having books in hand and doing reading. I was very happy about that one. That was in the mind, body, spirit category. And then the cover award, the Coalition of Visionary Resources, People's Choice Book of the Year, I think was very much of an honor because that is people reading the book, voting for that particular book. Mm -hmm. It's not in front of a bunch of experts, you know, for children's literature. It's just folks reading the book. Mm-hmm. I guess I, I would pick those out as probably my three favorites. Yeah, and they're 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 great awards, and congratulations on the work that you've done Thank for this you. book and the recognition that you've received <laughs> for this. And you know, I think that things go in trends too. I know that we have a lot of technology and a lot of eBooks, but you know, just I, I'm thinking of you know myself when you know vinyl records were very big and popular. And we kind of got away from that and went to more of the digital downloads. But I'm finding that even the younger generations are going back to actually having something in hand like a vinyl record. And I think we're going to go back that way uh, in the future to actually having a handheld book because there's just something physically holding that book versus, you know, a digital book that has, you know, 12,000 different books on it. And this book is definitely going to be fun because you can interact with it with all of the different um, features and stories and emotions that, uh, you know, go into this book. And you know, in the back, it talks about how it really is a two-level story. What do you mean by that, a two-level story? Well, I, I, well, I was mentioning earlier that I believe that there's the storyline that goes through it, the mm-hmm. myth of how the trees got their voices and the gifts of the trees and how the, the young tree asks um, the creator that they have – the trees have listened to all these creatures for all of their – eons and they the creatures are able to speak to one another and the trees have desired voices as well and that's that's the general storyline but then the other level is taking it as a uh, a little biology book and reading the facts and being intrigued with um you know Columbines grow close to the rocks because they need the heat, and butterflies can't open the wing their wings until it gets to be 81 degrees. You know those kinds of things that gets us closer and closer to the marvel of what happens on the earth to make it all work. You know people kind of get in the way of how the earth works, but the mm-hmm. earth does really well on her own. <laughs> You know, with all these she really does. amazing little details. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, really quite wonderful. 
it really is a complex tapestry of life and, and living things, and the Earth will take care of herself. And we are, you know, there's a lot of discussion on global warming and the impacts that are taking place and, you know, how us as a species of humans is really impacting and changing that. So it's going to be interesting to see moving forward. There's a lot of light on the environmental issues that we're facing right now, and I, I hope that people will start, you know, paying more attention to, you know, how we're changing our environment. And I, I just like to add to that, that, Mark. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sue. I was just going to add to that because, um, interestingly enough, on the news this morning, it came up how Beijing is like on a high alert for the terrible smog conditions that they're having there. We can't that. see the buildings and people are walking with face masks. And I mean, that's really um, the antithesis of working with uh, nature and everything working in harmony together. Yeah, I think they're calling and it like a red level warning so it's the highest that they've ever done no yeah, it's horrible but i i believe that when we have uh books for children and they start at an early age being mm -hmm. recognizing the power of the earth and that our our responsibility as thinking beings to protect her and to live in harmony with her i think we when we start young with children then what a perfect time it's a perfect time to start with children's books, teaching children about the delight of Mother Earth. And, and I guess and, this would... you know, the benefit, benefit of that is the people who read to the children, the adults who read to the children, mm -hmm. are also learning from it as well. And I would say... I just think we have to start young. Yeah, and I would add to the book, you got to plant that seed. You know, you yeah. plant the seeds yep. early on and mm -hmm. you get them reading. And, you know, I have to say that this generation behind us... Uh, is much more intuitive uh, generation, I think, than what we ever were. You know, they, they look at if they're going to buy something, they want to know what they're buying and if there's a meaning behind that and if it actually makes sense for them to buy it. And, you know, I, I just think that the millenniums and the next generations coming up are definitely much more in tune. And, you know, this is why that book is obviously, you know, getting national recognition and, you know, got to plant that seed. Do it, do it early and um, let them grow up with how the, the trees got their voices and be in touch with the trees. <laughs> right. So we're going to be heading into our last break, uh, Sue. So real quick, uh, before we cut to break, could you let folks where, what website uh, they could find you? And we're going to come back from break and talk about more work that you're doing. Yes. To buy the book, please go to satiama, S-A-T-I-A-M-A dot com. It's also on Amazon. It's in many bookstores around the United States, but those would be the two big places to be able to find it right away. Perfect. And I've gone ahead and pasted that link from Amazon right on Inspired Living Radio over on Facebook. So the whistling is coming up. That means we're heading to our last break. We'll be back in two minutes. You are listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Home Times Radio, the voice of consciousness. Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. I'm Maggie Chula. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. Join us every week here on Om Times Radio for Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired, inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Have you 
been searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream, check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pascual and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. And welcome back, Inspired listeners. You are listening to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim here on Ohm Times Radio. We've been talking the last 45 minutes about how the trees got their voices. Uh, the first book written by Sue Lyon. And before we were going into break, Sue, I was I was just thinking too – you know, one of the exercises that I do when I'm out on a hike, if I'm if I'm taking people out, is I actually have them stop and I touch the tree, and actually oh, just yeah. look at their thoughts on what their thoughts are. And it's amazing because you can go touch one tree, and you'll have a certain thought. You go touch another tree, and the thought completely changes. So it's just a, a good interaction for our listeners. If you want to go out and just go touch a tree, look at your thoughts, and it's a way that the trees can actually connect and communicate with you. It's very fascinating. It is. Yeah, very Native American uh, uh, type of exercise. So it's been around for a long, long time. So Kim, did you you had a question for Sue in regards to um, the work she's doing with the publisher? Yeah, I thought it'd be kind of a good time to talk a little bit about Satyama, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, the yeah. publisher that you're working with, and and really all that they have to offer. Went on their website. It looks like they've got uh, quite an offering. Uh, on their site. Karen Stutz is um, uh, the kind of the brains behind Satyama. Uh, she and her sister decided to start this um, website to be able to, you know, have a um, kind of a footprint in the spiritual, metaphysical, body, mind, spirit arena. And she has been, Karen has just been absolutely wonderful with me, number one, teaching me how to bring a book to market just through the actions that she took and her her honesty about the whole thing, her smarts. Uh, she's just a real savvy publisher, her uh, willingness to go the extra mile to make sure it's promoted the way it needs to be promoted and uh, just even written up the way it was needed to be written up. I'm just so grateful for what she's done. Yeah, and they actually, it looks like, refer to themselves as a university, too. I guess, are there online courses? Or what What all can, let's say, our listeners who might go to the site find there and um, what might help them by going there? there? There are all kinds of articles. There are classes. There are um, books, different kinds of books that can be um uh, bought through the shop. Um, and then there's the Satyama Writers Resource, which is a whole branch of Satyama that helps people who maybe they have a story in their hands, maybe they already have the manuscript, maybe they need help with editing or illustrating or um, bringing their books to market. Uh, there's a whole branch now to help people get what they have you know, imagined what they are creating to uh, to actually bring it forth as a book. So it's, now, it's a pretty comprehensive site there. And um, is it for people that are wanting to publish uh, books or information that have more of a spiritual angle to it or, no, you know, something not around consciousness? Not I'm sorry? Not necessarily. If people, people, for example, if people have written their memoirs, for example, um, they could come to Karen, they could come to Satyama Writers Resource and get help with just the next steps. How do I do it? What do I need to pay attention to? How do I buy an ISBN number? How do I get the printing done? All of these different questions that come up that a lot of people don't even know where to begin. I, I guess more of my question, 
I guess more of my question is that for people who, let's say, have a, a, a storyline or a book that they want to publish that does have a spiritual angle to it, is it difficult? I mean, do you have to more search out a place like maybe Satyama? Is it is it difficult to go um, get published with that kind of message through like a mainstream publisher? You know, I I would it I don't know. That is a very good question. And I have to say, I don't know. I feel that the marketing part of anybody's writing is an important part to make sure it gets into the um, areas that it needs to get into. I've just finished another children's book um, that is actually going to be a little bit more mainstream than How the Trees Got Their Voices. It still has a very important message to it. It's called White Butterfly. Um, it's actually going to arrive here uh, from the printer at the end of the month. But uh, but I can't say that it, it's just in the body-mind-spirit arena. It's actually more mainstream. And I think for Satyama Writers Resource, I don't think it would really matter if it was in body-mind-spirit or if it's in more mainstream. The whole intention is to be able to help people get what is inside of them out to a place where they could actually produce that book. We have a um, we have a question that's come in from a listener, an inspired listener in Canada, and she asks, "Is this book part of a curriculum for children in schools?" Oh, Good question. The, how the trees got their voices? Yes. Uh huh. Well, how interesting! I believe that it could be part of a curriculum for. Schools. I've done some book readings. Uh, one was just recently at an elementary school in Littleton, Colorado. Um, it's a private school, but it, there are a bunch of second graders, and I had a whole um, uh, had an interview by one of the kids, and then I read the book, and then I showed them how the book uh, was put together. But because of the information in the book, I do believe that it could be part of a, a school curriculum for young kids. Yeah, that's what she was saying, too. If not, it would be a great asset to our children's educational experience. That was her comment yeah. as well. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. So now you have a another book that you're talking about um, coming out here. And uh, would you like to tell our audience a little bit about that as well? Yes, this one's called White Butterfly and Her Wings of Many Colors. And it's all around this beautiful, sparkling, white-winged butterfly who has wonderful gifts. She's got the gift of speed and determination. She's helpful. She she has a healing ability to her. But she starts sinking into the thinking that she's going to be even more special if she has wings of many colors. And the the... Uh, garden fairy says, white butterfly, white butterfly, I need your help. The neighboring garden has had an evil spell put on it. And I know I've asked you to do dangerous journeys before, but this one will really call on all of your gifts. So white butterfly agrees to uh, take this journey to help the garden heal. And in return, could she have her wings of many colors? So Lady Fairy decides, yes, she will grant her lady, her wings, but she's very concerned that this might just be vanity working. Well, White Butterfly takes off on her journey, and she comes back. She heals the Garden of Roses, and then she comes back, and she has granted her wish of these wings. And what happens is she starts thinking she's real special, and she goes to neighboring parks and does performances, and she starts forgetting about all the work that she needs to do in her own garden. Well, one day, and there's a conversation between she and Lady Fairy about vanity changing people. You know, sometimes you're never satisfied after that for the for the natural gifts that you have. Right. And one day, she is caught by the butterfly collector, mm, and that starts a whole. Collector. <laughs> it starts dun, dun, a whole dun. expansion of understanding of how vanity gets her into trouble. So that's what this book is about. <laughs> and and again, it's um, it's being uh, handled by Satyama, being marketed by Satyama, 
and the book is to arrive from the printer at the end of this month. So there are already pre-sale orders going on, which is very exciting for me. Um, it was a story written by Arthur Bustillo um, many, many years ago, and his daughter found his story when he passed on and decided she would like to bring it to market. So she asked me to illustrate it, and in the process of that, it had to be completely rewritten. So I have I have essentially come up with a new way of telling the story, um, making it more um, you know, agreeable for children of this gen of these these modern times, you know. So very we're very creative. excited about the book. Very excited. I've also um, illustrated some other children's books, Nosey's Wild Ride on the Bell of Louisville, and I'm illustrating Sammy the Seahorse right now, which will be a little biology book for kids. So, well, Sue, yeah. we've come to the end of the uh, show, if you can believe it already. Uh, <laughs> oh, we've gone yeah. ahead and pasted, uh, posted uh, the link for the publisher and Amazon for specifically how the trees got their voices. Uh, so check that out. Check out Sue Lyons' best-selling um, How the Trees Got Their Voices book. It's been a pleasure having you on. We'd like to uh, talk again Thank with you, you in 2016 with the, the new books that you have coming out. And uh, thanks for being a guest. We really appreciate it. Thank you Thank so you much. So it's much, been a Sue. delight. Thank you, it Kim. It was a pleasure. And for next week's show, Kim, uh, who do we have coming yes. on? We have got Dr. Barbara DeAngelis. We're so excited about having her on. She's a very well-known uh, motivational speaker, author, teacher. She um, is the author of a most recent book called Soul Shifts, which we're going to be talking about. She's going to be giving us all kinds of great tips uh, on how to live a happier life. So join us next week. Awesome. I'm looking that. forward to it. All right. Until next week, be kind, be caring, be compassionate. Namaste. Namaste.